great to have Jillian Robertson back here on the program. She's going to be fighting on a pretty huge card coming up here December 11th, UFC 269. Jillian, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. Just excited getting down to these last three weeks. Yeah, it's uh, coming up pretty quickly. Uh, we last saw you back in March. Uh, here we are talking about a fight in December. I imagine you wanted to fight a little bit sooner than this. Uh, tell me sort of the reason for the layoff. Um, Obviously, I did want to fight sooner. I feel like I, that's just me in general. I'm a fighter. I like to get in there. I like to compete. I love to be as active as possible. But um, coming off of two losses, I feel like it was kind of a necessary break. I needed to take a step back and reassess my skills and where we're at and what we we're doing and how we we're approaching everything. And um, I've really reconstructed just how my camp is going now. And I feel like I'm just a more complete fighter. And we're really going to see that on December 11th. And correct me if I'm wrong, you signed a new contract, right? Because if I, if I remember, you, I think the last fight was the last one going in. Or t tell me what happened there with your contract. Um, I believe I signed a new contract before my last fight. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so yeah. this is the the second one, I guess, on the new four fight deal. I'm assuming. Correct. Correct. Okay, that makes sense. That that's all good. Um, you mentioned it there. Uh, you know, your last fight. Uh, you know, really tough opponent in uh, Miranda Maverick, who I know you now got a chance to train with. Uh, what did you take away the most from that performance? Because I know it's back in March, but I'm sure you took away a lot from it. Uh, I, yeah, I guess you, uh, especially when you get to train with somebody, it's like you can really see. Um, I guess uh, where like where you really need to correct yourself, the real, the mistakes you really made, and uh, really just take a step back and really uh, just reconstruct it all together. Okay, well that's good. Um, and take me through that. I mean, uh, you know, I don't fight obviously, so I don't know sort of what the the etiquette is. But like, you went down to Colorado. You're telling me this is hot fair to uh, follow your coach Dean Thomas, who is there for looking for a fight. Um, so you're going to go train with Miranda. Do you give her the heads up before you're going to the gym? Like, how did that work when you're you know again training with someone that you just fought? It was actually uh, probably about two or three months ago. She hit me up uh, when she was about to fight Macy Barber, and she asked me to be a part of her camp. So we worked together probably it was like two months after we fought. So we already uh, kind of had that relationship, and then I ended up going out to Colorado and just seeing her again. So it was all, it's good to see her again. Yeah, well, that's good. Okay, yeah, so that, that kind of makes sense. Because I know, you know, every fighter is different when it comes to their, their past opponents. So at least you sort of took advantage of it there. Um, really good fight here against uh, Priscilla Kaushera. Uh, Ten and three record. What do you know about her? How do you feel like you match up against her here? I feel like this is a pretty ideal matchup for me. Uh, it's kind of like a striker versus grappler in a lot of ways. She's definitely dangerous on the feet. She's aggressive. She's going to keep on coming forward no matter what. She's got the nickname Zombie Girl for a reason. Uh, like uh, one of, Against Luana Car Carolina, she took like three head kicks pretty solid and was just walking forward the whole time. So I'm like, I know she's going to be standing there the whole time and ready to bang. And I feel like obviously my, my world is on the ground. And uh, I feel like it's going to be a dominant performance there. How did you structure your camp? We talked about Colorado. Was there any other cross training as well for this camp leading into the fight? Uh, I feel like my whole uh, camp is cross training. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not one home base. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of just train with Dean Thomas, David Evans, Jose Shorty Torres. So there's the four of us who really work together every single day and drill and get our work in and then kind of travel everywhere to get our uh, like different bodies, different looks, different people to work with. So um I've been going to Fusion in Orlando, Gambler's Jiu-Jitsu, West Palm, uh, Goat Shed Academy in Miami. Then obviously there's uh, Easton and Pound for Pound in Colorado. And so just kind of all over the place here. Yeah. How important is that variety though in camp, just getting different looks and not being stagnant in your training? I think it's extremely important, especially like, like when you go into a fight, you're, you don't know that person. You don't know what they're going to bring you. And that's pretty much what I'm getting when I'm going to all these different gyms. I don't know what these girls are going to bring me. So it adds that little bit of extra pressure and extra nerves that uh, you need to be exposed to. What, someone I know you train with a lot, and it seems like you guys have become really good friends, is Hannah Goldie. How did this all like come together with you guys being sort of like, it seems like you guys are training all the time together. Uh, it's funny. It, you're saying people are different with people that they fought. Hannah was actually my first pro fight. Yeah. So I like, uh, it's kind of funny that now we're getting so close, but, um, yeah, just over the, I feel like it was like through COVID and everything whenever Dean and I, like we started cross training more. So I started going up to fusion a lot more and, uh, it, it's awesome to have, I, I feel like I'm not a girl with a lot of girlfriends. So it's awesome to have somebody like on the same page as you who just gets it with the fight life too. Yeah, no, that makes a big difference. Uh, how about the weight cut? We got a bit of time here, but how's all that going ahead of the fight? I, I don't think that's ever an issue for me, really. Uh, I'm walking like 130, 132 right now, waking up. So it's really, uh, that's the last thing on my mind. <laughs> Would you ever go to 115 if you're saying it's an easy cut for you? Um, 
I don't think so. I don't think it's worth it necessarily. I feel like that would be a hard cut for me to get down to 115. And I don't think it's necessarily worth it if it takes away from my performance. Or like I said, cutting weight is the last thing on my mind right now. I don't want to be sitting here three weeks out being like so worried about my weight that I'm not even thinking about the fight. And at the end of the day, I'm like, I go to the gym and I'm working with guys that are like, 30, 40 pounds bigger than me, and I'm still able to do what I want and manhandle them if I'm better than them. I'm like, it's going to be the same set situation in the cage. Five or 10 pounds won't make a huge difference. If I'm better than you, I'm going to be better than you. Your corner. I imagine Dean Thomas will be in your corner. I know there's been a couple fights where he hasn't been able to make it due to other commitments. Uh, who's going to be in the cage with you that night? Uh, it will be Dean Thomas and uh, David Evans. Oh, nice. Okay, that's yeah. great. And uh, how's this fight playing out on the 11th? Obviously, I feel like you're going to win, but how do you envision it going down? Uh, I feel like everybody knows what I'm looking for. So I feel like uh, it's going the way I think it is. I'm going in there. I'm taking, uh, getting a quick takedown and getting to the throat as fast as possible. Where do you feel like an imp uh, like like a win sort of puts you uh, in the grand scheme of things? Because again, I know a bit of a skid here, but you come out here and get a, a, a submission like you're hoping, that's obviously going to make a little bit of noise. Uh, I guess I'll just see where it takes me. I, I, I don't really have any exact plans. I know, I'm hoping that it'll get me a little bit... Uh, Move me either so I am ranked or I can get a ranked opponent after this. I, I want to be moving up, and I feel like I'm really in the position now mentally and physically to make a title run. Like I'm not saying that like it'll be like next two fights that I'm like, going to see Valentina across the cage for me, but I think like four or five fights down the road, I could be in that position. There's a lot of things going on in your division. Uh, first and foremost, someone you fought, uh, Talia Santos, getting that quick win over Joanne Wood. Uh, how surprised with you were you, or were you expecting her to finish her that quickly? Oh, um, I wasn't expecting her to finish her, honestly. Uh, but Tyler's obviously a threat. Like she's proven it against Roxanne, against me, against JoJo. So uh, I'm not surprised to see how well she's doing. Do you think that performance will get her a title shot or do you think they maybe go with someone like Andrea Lee? Like, I'm sure you pay attention to this in your division a little bit. Oh, yeah. It's, speaking of Andrea Lee, she had an amazing performance recently. I know. That was amazing. Yeah. But um, that would be actually, that would be a great matchup to see is Andrea Lee versus Tyla. Um, but I don't know. I think that that might be the match to make before she does get the title shot. Okay, that's interesting. And then the other name, obviously, is, is Manon Furio, who we've seen uh, just, you know, destroy her opponent. She's looked really good. What, what do you think of her potential in the division as well? I'm sure she's someone else you're kind of looking at a little bit. Oh, yeah. It, it, to watch her fight has been an amazing thing, too. I feel like she looks spectacular when she goes on and performs. But um, I guess these are all girls that I know that are, like, threats in the division. But uh, no matter what, it's a winnable fight. <laughs> Definitely not your division, but uh, someone I don't know if you got to train with her at all when you were at ATT, but Kayla Harrison is really making a lot of noise right now. She won another PFL tournament. She's a free agent right now. Just what, what have you made of her sort of rise in PFL and now having the opportunity to test the free agent market? Oh, yeah. She's obviously like there's few people who are just have that champion mindset where she's always like ready to go, ready to work. She wants to improve it uh, every single day. So to see her uh, get all the success is really awesome. Downtime, what's that looking like? I, if I remember correctly, hanging out with the dogs and going to the beach, is that still the same thing? Or are you doing anything else in your free time? Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I try every once in a while to try something new. I've uh, painted a little bit recently. I've tried oh, surfing cool. recently. So I'm like, I'm trying to pick up some hobbies, but it's still pretty much just chilling with the dogs more than anything else. Okay, how did surfing go? I was just curious. It was. I know it's very tough. I've tried it myself. I'm not very good. I don't have good balance. Um, I, I'm not an elite surfer but i don't think i'm too bad either I went, i've only been like a handful of times but um i've been able to stand up on the board pretty well so i feel like that that's the first step we're getting somewhere there you go baby steps and uh, this is a great fight december 11th ufc 269 jillian thanks so much for the time always a pleasure just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media and if you got any sponsors or shout outs i'll give you the last word uh obviously uh savage underscore ufc on instagram and twitter and uh, just shout out Dr. Dabber and Chicken Pound, my two main sponsors, always supporting me. Obviously, my team at the firm. And uh, watch me fight December 11th. Get, me, get my hand raised. <laughs>